for wireless innovation over here. And Neil, we were just discussing, you, you guys are, are a, a little bit, I wouldn't call it a strange duck in the whole industry because um, we're here amongst all of these LMR companies uh, showcasing uh, PMR, LMR solutions, uh, radios, networks, but you guys take it differently, right? Absolutely, and uh, the first year I came here, probably about six years ago, um, it was probably even more LMR focused because if you didn't do Tetra or P25 in Australia and the show, no one came to your stand to talk to you. So for, for many years, yeah, we, we struggled to get some traction, but as you can see with the, com the, the, the convergence of all the technologies now, satellite has actually become a very, very important part of our public safety um, uh, uh, landscape with, with radio. Okay. Uh, so we've brought everything together into um, I guess what we would like to say ubiquitous solutions. Right now today you see a lot of satellite antennas but you also see a lot of radio equipment here. Um, you know we can both Motorola and Tate and, and there are other brands that we deal with it doesn't really matter but the, the, the principle is this solution here for example is actually running on a satellite channel. So the, the, the user can go from a UHF channel on his normal P25 and he can simply just change over to a SAT channel and talk on that SAT channel um, in the same way. Now that will come back into the same call by ISSI. So as far as the user's concerned, he's talking on a radio that's going back to the, the call from wherever he is with duress, location and ID from a portable and the mobile. So it's a complete ecosystem that you're offering? Yes. So we, we, we just don't, we don't uh, say, well, you're on this bearer or that bearer. The, the, the user just wants to use it and know that it's going to, either the audio is going to get there or the duress or whatever. So we utilize to do that both LTE, that could be 5G, it could be 3G, it could be whatever you want it to do. And of course, L-band satellite. As I said, Australia is a different country, different continent, different country. Uh, you guys do things differently here. The country is so large, the country is so big that you need a proper backhaul system. Fiber is not an option. So that's why we're here and seeing the SATCOM system. And that's what drove us because Australia is such a big country. I mean, when we look at the population of, uh, of Australia versus the US, for example, similar size geography. We have, I think it's uh, 30 million versus 340 million for the same size of yes. country. But we still have people across that geographic region that need communications. We can't say, well, if you're on the East Coast and you're in a metro city, you, you, know, you, you can call up an ambulance and you can have comms. Uh, anywhere else you can't. And, and so what we did is we tried to extend that out to, to enable us to have comms. Again, our strategy in Australia is such that they're investing very heavily still into P25 and LMR. They are just driving investment into many of our states now of just P25 terrestrial infrastructure. Um, is that the right thing or the wrong thing? I'm not to judge that. What I do is say, well, it just happens, right? So you need to adapt. So we adapt. But the, the beautiful thing is, is when you're running with the system, you've still got least cost routed uh, LTE and satellite, okay, for your data, for your voice. So if you were to imagine, if you had your mobile data terminal or PDA or whatever you want to use your iPhone, whatever, you've still got a Wi-Fi bubble. Okay, that's least cost router to LT and satellite, as well as your radio. Now this works great, and I think one of the, the key things is when we run in the simplex mode to the vehicle, the vehicle is the hub concept. The vehicle is your communications hub. It becomes your tower, essentially, when there is none. But remember, we have a problem with in-building coverage in a lot of senses with uh, LMR, uh, because we've got to reach the tower. So when we go into elevators and stairwells and things like that, um, your, your portable struggles to be able to communicate uh, efficiently at tower. But if you are talking simplex to your radio, your vehicle that's parked outside, all I gotta do is reach that vehicle. And then I have access to the whole network, wherever I am. So it solves a number of different problems. There's no cost to putting any infrastructure. You put that in your car today, you drive, you work, you're on the network. There's no infrastructure cost at all. It's just It is so easy actually. Service. It's so it's actually so easy. So there's no planning. Now what we So say, how fast is it deployable then? 
Well, I could probably fit your vehicle with a satellite terminal ready to go with a P25 radio in probably two hours. So essentially, um, the, the, the beauty of it is, is we can get it up, the infrastructure not required, we can put it in, but we can still leverage what infrastructure you do have. So it fills a gap. So let's just say that you're not sure which way you do want to go. So we're not ready for 5G in a lot of cases. We don't know which way to turn. Where are you going to put your investment? I don't know. But if I give you a solution that bridges that gap for now, you can decide to change that to 5G. You could change yeah. that antenna, but you have not invested into a infrastructure plan that's going to be a massive capital expenditure to get to where you go. So it's a very cost-effective solution, rapid deployable, yes. right, and not too expensive. That pretty much sums it up. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and we do land, sea, and okay. air, so okay. you Good. know. Event. We do every year and the reason for that is we want to support this event. I think it is the greatest event we have in Australia for public safety. You look around the room, you see the high caliber of people that this event attracts. It's very specific, it's very high level public safety people, not just vendors, but the actual users and the decision makers for that. And that's what makes this event special. So as small as it is, it's a quality event and we need to support that because we need it to thrive in our in our public safety environment and this is what does it. Let's let's toast on that one, I think. Let's toast Comes Connect. Comes right? Connect. It's Cheers. Thank All right. you very much. Wow, wow. that's good. <laughs> I hope you've had a good day. I had a great day. Yeah, super. I can't hear myself talking actually, so this is kind of strange, but this is a, a tactical situation here uh, with the helmet, with the, um, the camera on the side which fits into uh, that one over there, not right now. But, uh, and this is a software defined radio. If you ask me if it's heavy to wear, I would say no. Uh, this is lightweight, uh, the headset is pretty lightweight. It's, um, and this is, well, no, this is, a, this is a heavy bulky radio. But basically, uh, let, me, let me explain to you, no, no, let Jamie explain to you exactly what this is because Jamie is the expert here. Let me take this off right now. Okay, that's one, thank you so much. Oh, now I can hear myself. I was <laughs> shouting probably, right? I was shouting you or can not. You hear yourself now. Okay, so just to give you an idea what this is all about. What it is, is bringing, bringing the, 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 the person into a Wi-Fi bubble, a personal Wi-Fi bubble as it were, that then has the ability to again, like we said, vehicle is the hub, connect back to the vehicle, which then has a link by satellite or LTE or whatever it is. So in a meshed environment, so you have native H.265 video encoding built in, so you've got you know great video capability built into that thing. You can have a PDT button on there, so you've got a, a meshed audio capability that can come back again into our network and back to whatever core you want to use. Um, and then you've obviously got a very, very capable broadband data application that is now accessible from the person and that you can carry that out kilometers depending on how you set up. This is more like a defense yeah. type of scenario, right? But there's some awesome technology out there that's being used for a reason in those markets. Can we apply that in a different form factor or a different way to this market? I believe we can and we should look at that because everyone, the, the, the options you have today is Wi-Fi bubble and you know Wi-Fi is A, not secure and B, not going to give you any range and B, you've got maybe your uh, UE or, or, or LT base station, mini base stations that you're going to deploy into vehicles. Again, is that an option for, for it is one option. Do we have other options? Can you name one other option for extending your data capability in a local environment? Wyatt. So we need to bring options and this is, we, you know, it's still early days, so the, the technology is very good, it's how we apply it to the market and, and this is what we had to do is say, okay. guys, is this something that may solve a problem and we believe it is. This is wireless innovation, right? That's what we do. <laughs> That's what a company is all about. That's the name of the company. All right. Okay. 
This is a repeater case. It is. So um, essentially we were asked to, to build a satellite repeater uh, option for urban search and rescue for uh, New South Wales Fire and Rescue originally, but a lot of fire agencies have adopted this. What they wanted was a small, simple, deployable case that they could put in a fire ground situation or urban search and rescue and be connected back into their network wherever they may go. So they may be dispatched to Christchurch, to Japan, to wherever you know they're, they're required to go under the UN uh, into a uh, um, uh, arrangement. So what we did is we, we put in a software-defined repeater uh, from radioactivity, a Kairos repeater. Um, it could be any repeater, but we've used that. Uh, we run that in P25, um, conventional, um, and then we've built in a, a, a full power system, a touchscreen uh, control panel to change your, manage your channel change for that repeater. It's obviously got your LTE Wi-Fi bubble again, so you've got a data access and your SAT PDT. So essentially you could take that case, you could put it down on the ground anywhere on the planet, okay, pretty much, except the poles, okay, where you have your satellite coverage, and you can basically be talking on your P25 or DMR or analog radio back into your core network, whether that's another radio at the other side, or a ISSI P25 core, or whatever you want to do, basically it gives you that, that, that and then you've also got your local fire ground repeat channel. So you've got your local repeater channel, and you've got your... Uh, network connection back to your core. Operates when it's closed as well? When it's closed as well. And it's got a, a lithium-ion battery built in so you don't need the power. You can run probably two hours without, uh, without any power as well. So that case closed on the ground will be your entire repeater network on a fire ground plus a network back into your, your, your radio network wherever that may be. Basically, when you see all of these solutions here at the booth of uh, Wireless Innovation, everything comes together in the dispatch center. In this case, it's the dispatch of Zitron. Zitron, It yes. can be any dispatching solution. It could be anyone. We just particularly use this one because we, we, we uh, have a lot of customers that are currently using and we integrate into Zitron. So this shows a satellite and uh, all your other technologies coming back to a central core by uh, CSSI, ISSI, um, and, and many other um, uh, options, uh, even e &M for some, you know, we just want an audio bridge into, into his console. But the, the point is, is that all of this that we do, we bring back into your existing network, your existing consoles, which is important, so into your core. So we don't have to change the way that you operate anything in order to put this in and use it. You pick it up and use it as you would today, integrate it into your entire system. So that means that critical communications doesn't need to be that difficult. There are so many simple solutions on the market until 4G LTE is really implemented. Uh, you have these kind of really wireless innovative solutions. Uh, definitely here at the booth of wireless innovation. Yeah.